You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center, this is Phoenix FM. This is 92.5 Phoenix FM, community radio for Dublin 15. Hey everybody, it's JB Jeremy Borash and you are listening to Daryl O'Connor on the... Welcome to the Wrestling Rewind. The only wrestling podcast by fans who don't hate wrestling. Hold the never. Don't know what that was from. Some anime, I think. Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday here on Phoenix 92.5 FM. This is the Wrestling Rewind. My name is Daryl O'Connor. Thank you for joining us here on the Earthenome Media, the Wrestling Rewind.com and the True Penny Channel. And um, we're back, our first show of 2023. Um, thank you for checking out all the shows that we have. Um, of course, if you haven't checked them out, we have shows with uh, James Twopenny where we look at the Brawl for All. There's a special uh, special Christmas show where we look at um, the wrestling, the what was that terrible thing called? Wrestling Society X and a few other bits and pieces. <laughs> uh, that's a charity stream. We'll be putting up our um, our links to um, where you can help out uh, the cause that we were that we were raising money for on that day as well. And of course, this is your first show. Please do subscribe, spread the word of the show, and go over to the wrestlingrewind.com, the True Penny channel on Earth Media, where you can get all the shows all for free. There's no paywall yet. We might put a paywall up eventually, though, to, to do Raw Rumble 2000, um, because Ooh. we are threatening to do it. <laughs> uh, but before we get there, we're back in the time machine this week. Um, we're going to look at Raw from 2000, uh, sorry, from the, the 22nd 1999. February, 1999, 1999, February 2022, that's what it was, and uh, yeah, but before we get there, we're going to talk about news as well, because holy hell, news <laughs> that we got to talk about, but before we get to it, as I said, my name is Daryl Connor. I'm not alone, you heard him, you love him, fastest man on his feet, one and oh. Still waiting for CM Punk to uh, to respond to his uh, his claims to meet him. Open challenge in, in a ring, an open challenge in the ring, in the cage, wrestling you know, ring, uh, boxing ring. Doesn't and, matter. And doesn't matter. It is Mr. Martin Hardy. How are things, sir? A grand. I think Punk Punk gets a bit of a reprieve. So New Year, New Me. Got into the whole uh, back into the the weightlifting and the training and day one. I wasn't even doing it in massive. I was only swinging an old kettlebell, and I I felt a like a almost like a spring or a snap or something going me back, and uh, got worse and worse and worse over the next couple of days, and went to the doctor and I have sciatica. So Punky's hurt now. Come on, that's it. That's it. You the might whole, have a chance. <laughs> the, whole, the whole right side of my body is mangled. Like the whole right side. So, yeah, you know, I, it's, I, it's, a, it's, it's a handicap match. There you go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I could take him on with me with me left hook. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's nasty. That's nasty. There's nothing worse than there's nothing worse than when you get some kind of injury like that, you know, and you're just kind of out for a while. So hopefully you'll 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 get back on the back on the saddle soon and. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised now if you do get that tweet or email from Punk going, "Oh, I'll take you next week." Oh you know? yeah, oh yeah. Now that he now, now that he smells blood in the water. Man. That's it. That's it. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, look. Before we we do go to Raw from 1999, <laughs> I've been saying on this show for pretty much <laughs> well, since we were, well, as long, much, as long as I've been here. <laughs> yeah, that that WWE is getting ready for a sale, and all of a sudden, my like my phone goes mad. And that's never a good thing when that happens because it means something that happens in wrestling. And uh, 4 a.m. I think it was. 4 a.m. F- nearly into 5 a.m. Just everything goes mad. Yeah, what's it? The lads from uh, Cultaholic and all the the UK-based wrestling shows, they just they, they, they fire up a stream and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? 
uh, WWE has been sold to Saudi Arabia. Now, that was the headline. That was the headline. Uh, and they were talking about it, and tweets were going mad, and people were melting down, and it was going nuts. And basically, the story was that the Saudi Arabian government had uh, purchased the WWE. Now, yes, the, the public investment fund. Yes, which, the, uh, lad, the lads who buy, who, who fund. Um, yeah, Crown buy Joe. like. Yes, and buy like by soccer teams and by you know uh, things like that around the world. So it wasn't uh, an unrealistic or an inconceivable uh, rumor that went around. No, I mean it. It did have. Look, I I didn't I didn't expect it to be honest with you. I really didn't. But it did make the most sense in a weird way because of how much money they have given to WWE. How yeah. the look the fact that Saudi money is in lots of different random areas that you may not even know. Um, well, every every time they go out there, they get they spend fifty million on it, and that's yeah. only what what WWE gets. Like they obviously yeah. spend more on it than you know marketing in the country and that. So they have that twice a year deal for ten years, fifty million every time, hundred million a year. Like it's not much of a jump to think that they might go. Well, sure. Look, it's going to well cost us. It. It's going to cost us a billion anyway. Like, throw in another couple of billion, and we loan the bloody thing. Absolutely, and it's like you know, WWE still is a very attractive brand to own. You know, um, it, it. But I've never seen something be met with such concern. Is the word I want to use? Um, and I mean, rightly so. There were, you know. There, there, the ripples of this are still been felt. Um, but I suppose we should talk about what happened before that. Vince McMahon just shows back up. <laughs> well, so well, he he couldn't wait one week. He was back on the sixth of January. Yeah, one, he, he could not wait one week. No, he literally forces his way back in, makes himself. Uh, well, we don't know if he made himself, but he no, was. He, th- this isn't like rumor anymore he it is all public knowledge he wrote a letter to his own board stating i will not approve any sale or any tv license deal unless i'm brought back in as ceo well okay i didn't know that so because he'd he'd tried to get back in as ceo maybe two months before that the board almost unanimously voted against it so then Two months later, he sends them the letter because he's still the majority shareholder. He is. I, yeah. I will block all sales. I'll block all deals. I'm within a week, chairman of the board. So here, so okay, that makes a lot of sense because the the talking point was that he had initially he was brought back in to sell the WWE to Saudi Arabia. Now it still looks like the case is he was brought in to initiate a sale a sale of WWE. So WWE is getting sold, and it looks yeah. like it's going to be sold by summer. So I mean. I was right about Sting coming back, and people said that was mad. I'm right <laughs> about this, so it's just like you know, two for two. It just takes a little bit longer than I thought it would. I I, I do tend to be good at calling these kind of things. Well, not to my own horn, but I mean, literally, you can go back and you can hear me say that how why it's been sold. And this thing was been geared up for sale for a long time. Now, a thing happened here is when Vince was ousted, he's like, "All right, this is the last play I have." And um, now, where do I think it's going? I think it's going to Disney. I genuinely do. I think Disney will buy it because they need they need a brand that isn't dead. This is a brand yes. that can go on forever just on its on its network. Um, like you you just side lo- like they don't even need to change the servers. All they have to do is just redirect to the WWE network, a little tab, boom, there you go, it's made. Like yeah. that's a massive, massive, massive power move. The, the other the other possibility is Comcast. So they own yeah. NBC and Peacock, yeah. and Peacock's already paying, like I say, a, a billion a year for for WWE or whatever it is they're paying them every year for. Yeah, uh, that's true. SmackDown. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. But he, here's the thing. Uh, um, do you know at the end of the year and all those like you're talking about Cultaholic and all them groups do their best of the year videos and all that? Yeah, I was watching one of them over Christmas, and. So a load of people commenting under it going, oh my God, 2022 was the craziest year in wrestling. Like, we'd never see anything like that again. And I wrote under it, that is exactly what we all said about 2021. Yeah. And 
2022 went nuts. Um, we're not even a full month into 2023, and it's all, it's already haywire. So, I, I, like at this stage, I there is no conspiracy theory. There is no nutcase idea. There is no wild notion that I am rejecting. Literally, anything, anything could happen. I mean, right. that's the way. I mean, that's the way you should go into most things, anyway. You should always, you know, trust but verify and do your own research with things. But well, I mean, like when when Vince left, I remember me and you were talking on the show about it. He left, and Stephanie stepped in, and I, I was talking to you. I was saying, God, you know, I I think he's stepped aside for a wee while to let the dust settle. He's put his own daughter in, literally just to hold his, keep his seat warm for him, and then he'll be back. And as I was saying that to you, I was thinking to myself, do I even really believe that? Or am I just being cynical? You know, like, uh, am, am See, I just I, saying that? But no, that's exactly what happened. So I am, <laughs> 2023, a completely open mind. I don't even think he did that for that reason because it's not a long term play it's a it's a death strangle you know he's like this ship is going down and I'm going down with it right so I don't it's not like he's you know they're saying he's back in control creative it's like that doesn't matter nothing WWE does now really matters until it's sold you know I I, yeah. I feel bad because Triple H actually was making the product very good um, and now it's like It'll be interesting to see once it's sold what happens. Because, like, they're already talking about The Rock being out at WrestleMania. They're talking about changes to the Royal Rumble. They're talking about all these kind of things. And I'm like, when this gets sold, because, again, like, we've just covered WCW as it was going down. And you saw that stuff just didn't matter. Because people, well, everyone except for Scott Steiner, he really cared. He was doing great matches. <laughs> he was. He was fantastic he was, by he the was, end. Yeah, he was killing it, like him and Booker T. But, I mean, like, you know, when the company starts going down, it's like, and this isn't, isn't WWE's going to shut its doors. Like, I, you know, even. No, no, not far, at all. Even as far back as 2007, when I first started doing wrestling media, you know, I would say WWE never had to do a pay-per-view ever again. But you don't. They don't need to do a show ever again. The network itself can sustain it. You know, it's, it's back catalog can sustain WDB as a brand pretty much forever because of what they own. Disney buy that or NBC buy that. You don't need a WWE, you know, but what would be interesting to see is if whoever buys it, and we'll pro- have this conversation again, like I, yeah. I guarantee it. Um, but whoever buys this now, what happens to them? Because they're already selling tickets for live events. They've stopped doing as many live events as they're doing. But there are a lot of events in, WD- in Dublin for WDB Live. I think it's in May. Um, and that's they're talking about doing a sale in June or July. So it'll be interesting to see. Ahead of, uh, ahead of the TV rights deals yes, coming up. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. it'll be interesting well, to see what they, like, how they prepare themselves for the sale now. Because when they were cutting everyone back and they, they did all those firings, that was a very clear indication. Because, like, before you sell a company or get acquired, you strip down to the most bare bones of the asset. So your main product, So if it's a product, you strip down and get rid of most of the staff. You have a bare bone staff that can carry you through. You do the sale to the acquisition and then the IP gets old and blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah, the merger and acquisition that takes over. But something with WWE, it's quite interesting because it's not a product per se. It's a group of people and contracts and, and stuff like that. So if they... There's one of two ways they can do it. They can either fire everybody, <laughs> right? And just carry over as the brand, which would just be TV products, pay-per-views, uh, licensing, all that, kind of, all that kind of stuff, which would go in. And then if it's in that sense, I'd be like, absolutely, that's going to somewhere like Disney+. Plus. But if it's, if it's more wholesale and it's more intact, that's when you get something like um, a Comcast, or even an AEW. Now, I would not want to see it going to AEW because no. then, it's, then it just creates a monolith. And we just live through a monolith with WWE. Yeah. And I, like, you know, I'm I'm the big AEW guy, but I, I, do, I don't want Tony Khan to buy it. No, it's like, it's like if you bought TNA, it would, it, you know, you need to have more... You yeah, have more, more, di- more brands. So, you saw what he did with Ring of Honor, you know. Wrestling was never, never better 
than when WCW and WWE were neck and neck. Yeah. Like absolutely. competition breeds innovation. Absolutely. And but then you go back to the whole Saudi thing. You need a billionaire. You know, WWE are bought by Saudi Arabia. Technically that creates that dichotomy. You know, but it nobody wants that. And then it, it kind of poisoned. Like again, there was concern, but there was also um, resentment when that from from pretty much the entire wrestling community where they're like, we do not want that. We will not watch WWE because I know people like Farmer Coles that his show Brin. He stopped watching WWE completely when he, Saudi shows start happening. Here's the thing, though: WWE had twenty years with no competition, where they were effectively able to get rid of the word wrestling. And yeah. just make the brand be what what people meant. People didn't say wrestling. They said WWE. Years. People said WWE. So I, I or, think or WWF actually. You still say WWF. I think uh, yeah. So I think there's there's that. It's it's that much of a well known brand that even if they did do a sale to Saudi Arabia, there'd be a lot of noise at the start. And within six months, people would be used to it. Because remember, all the everyone was going to boycott over them doing these crown jewel shows in Saudi Arabia. Mm. You know, like what 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 did they say now when there's a crown jewel show? They go, well, that that was actually good. You know, normally they're just big house shows, but that was actually pretty good. Like nobody's even talking about the Saudi Arabia stuff anymore. It's just become another pay per view to an extent. There are people who walked away. Completely, you know, and, and there are people that walked on like with this. I think there would be again, like you had a bunch of wrestlers going, No, I will walk out. And even in the Saudi Arabian sh- shows that they did, few people wouldn't go, but actually leaving, very different. Uh, I just it would be it would be interesting. To, I think it would be a, a massive misstep. In a way, but you're right, they would recover because there are people yeah. who like, and, you know. And here's the thing talking about selling WWE, you're talking about between, like, it's estimated that would be between seven and eight billion dollars. So, yeah, that's a two lot of things money. about that are there's only so many groups, companies in the world that can afford that. Uh, so, I wouldn't rule. The Saudis out at like no, it, it wouldn't either. When it comes down to brass either. tax, if they're the only ones who can put up the cash, they'll they're who'll get it. The yeah. other thing I would say about how much it's going to cost is around the um, creative direction of the show. Because you're saying there's been big improvements since Triple H took over. Whoever buys that is spending massive amounts of money on it, and they are going to want to see a return pretty quickly. Mm. Um, and they are whoever buys it. They are not wrestling people. They will have no sort of emotional or traditional attachment to the business. If it comes down to what it costs, they will strip the thing, the thing for parts. Like it'll yeah. be cut way, way back. You'll see all the all the wrestlers who were brought in be gone again. And like you say, WWE doesn't need to put on shows. Like one of the things they don't. One of the things that they proved with the bloody. Um, Thunderdome is they don't even need an audience they could set themselves up in a swanky looking uh, Thunderdome style thing you know in one location and never have to move around the country and just you know put what? their TV shows out do you know what you do WWE get bought by Disney right Disney parks are suffering now because they're kind of terrible right and I'm going to Disneyland Paris again in like two weeks because I like Disneyland right but they're terrible. WWE got bought by Disney. They they move WWE yeah. headquarters, but not not their headquarters, but the actual the shows. The show. Yeah. Move it to MGM. WCW used to do that. Yeah, that's exactly it. Just set yourself up there, make it an attraction where you buy a park ticket, you can go and watch the show. People will come, like even hold a WrestleMania there. Guess what? Everyone's gonna go, it, it and they're gonna go even, to the park. You know, it might even work to their benefit because if you've people filtering in and out all day, 
you don't have the one audience that's exactly. been there for four hours and is wrecked by the end, you know. Yeah, well, so, now some people are probably screaming, going, oh, but you'll have terrible crowds. I'm like, the crowd's terrible anyway. It's terrible. I mean, They're they already don't... piping in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the thing of it is, it's like, you, you can turn that into, and you can have a full land, you can have your, you can have a literal Hall of Fame there. Yeah. Like this this thing physical, like a itself. physical, yeah. You can have a physical hall, like you can have a WWE land. I know some people are cringing through time at that, but think about it. You have your own WWE area, right? Like half of MGM or some park in Disneyland or whatever. Physical Hall of Fame. You can have me and greet with the wrestlers. You can have some kind of, you can do a cartoony thing if you want. You can have the perform, a, a performance center there, and you can also have a massive arena. Now think about it. That people would have John Cena wander around the park like Snoopy and Daffy Duck. <laughs> it's just why not? Kids coming up to him. <laughs> I mean, why not? You know, but you can have so much there that it's it's people will come from all around the world to go there, and they will. And d- do not say to me, I'd never go there. Like uh, uh, hundred, Im- imaginary uh, person on the internet, or hundred you know, percent. I and you know who will. I feel about WWE, and a hundred percent I'd go. They I absolutely go, I go, go purely if there was time. nothing else. I go purely for a physical hall of fame. Yeah, I know. An actual, so would everybody else. An actual museum that I could walk around and forget the modern product and bask in all the stuff from when it was. I'd a hundred percent go. You could do your convention there. You can have you know you can set up a little ring where legends can fall around a bit. You know. It, it just oh, makes it's, sense. It it it's yeah. the, WWE is designed to make money, and you can bleed that forever without ever doing another show again. They don't need to do rest, and I've been saying this for years. You know they don't need to do a show. It's superfluous having a WWE show now. And the thing about it is, is like think about it, right? You do a, a you know wrestle con, the WWE con, or WWE week or something in Disneyland, right? Not not in the Magic Kingdom, but one of the other parks you have there, or to build another park or whatever, right? Everyone would go. Austin, Mick Foley, Taker, Kane, we're opening up a Hall of Fame. Everybody would go. Yeah, and then guess what? They go to the other parks. I um, mean, there you go. That's how you make your seven or eight billion back. And on top of it. And you can do that every year without doing another show. But then, you know, if they did set up another show, you do your WrestleMania but even, there, you do a little Even course. their shows, like, they can... Even the current WWE shows are set up in such a way that they can run them with, tw- you know, 20 wrestlers. Yeah. You know, they could have... They could have a... Their whole cast could be 20 wrestlers. Like, And, it, you know, people say, oh, you know... D- Disney would would ruin it. It's like Disney have stars, like the actual brand stars on the WWE yeah. Network, right? Like it doesn't after, matter, you know. They, they can have their own thing. It can exist in its own little vacuum, the way Marvel and you know. And, like, a, after all the firings, like sort of after COVID, when there were when every time there was a wave of firings, it was like hundreds of people. Yeah, uh, Brian Alvarez did a. Did a, an actual count of the live saw this. active, yeah, I saw this. active wrestlers who are the the live active roster at the moment, and he counted that on Raw, there was only something like eighteen active singles male wrestlers, and on SmackDown there was even fewer. And there's like so, six women, and six yeah, so they yeah. can and and like two tag teams between the between the two bloody and I mean like brands. a lot of a lot of the wrestlers already live in Florida. Yeah, so they they can a hundred percent run this on a uh, uh, an absolute skeleton uh, cast and on a budget. And any company that is putting up seven or eight billion dollars for it is going to want to see some payback pretty quick. Like again, Disney, and I hate to go back to Disney again, but they well, ruined my most sense. Yeah, they, they, but they ruined my favorite brand, Star Wars, by not understanding what they have. Right. Star Wars should have just made ridiculous money. You can, you can listen to shows there on there to know media where I go on massive rants. I'm not allowed to talk about Star Wars because I go on so many rants about it. But <laughs> the difference is they, they have built so these are, lands. These are lucky listeners that I'm a Battlestar Galactica man. <laughs> <laughs> but they have built these lands. Like they built the Star Wars land, right? So they're willing to do that kind of stuff. 
with WWE, yeah, yeah. with WWE, like, you know, things we wanted for years, like a Hall of Fame, where would you put it? Would you put it in, in the, their offices in WWE? That's ridiculous. They're not going to do that, right? Um, but if they had a space like that, where, you know, you could, and I mean, like, again, yeah, so people probably, you wouldn't have the actual WWE guys, you probably have local likes walking around or running like, you know, to, to do that as cast members or something like that. But, I mean, still, it is what it is. But, like, when it comes to, like, an actual Hall of Fame, like, all that stuff from the archives put in that you can actually go and visit. Um, that, <laughs> yeah. that, what, what do you call your man Hogan was going to bring in as the ultimate word? The renegade. The renegade. <laughs> the renegade walking around pretending the, to be the ultimate warrior. But, the, I mean, think about it. Like, even if that was there, and I, to be honest with you, I would not be a fan of that. But, I mean, some kids would probably love it, right? But at the same time, you know, if you were able to go in and, you know, experience WWE live where they have, you know, jobbers from the performance center, that's probably who you'd have during the day going in and come in and see how it's done. Like, it, these are not revolutionary yeah. ideas. These are no, ideas that they've get, already they've already done about 20 years ago. Get, get a know? harness on you and have your photo taken on top of Hell in a Cell. Like, oh, man, like this. Yeah, this is just throwing money at you people will just come in with dumped like wheelbarrows of money to do stuff that come and see the original belts have a picture with the belt you know um it, hold the winged eagle oh my just, god like <laughs> i'd be on a plane in the morning <laughs> it's so would everybody and then when you're done with that they can like they can fleece you for food you can have you can reopen wwe new york yeah. but call it wwe orlando oh it's it just makes the most sense in the world. Just if they take the product out where they never have to actually wrestle again, it just makes the most sense in the world to just fleece yeah. people with it. I'd, and everyone have, have a great time. I'd have a picture of myself with the original Intercontinental title wearing a pair of Bret Hart's glasses and it wouldn't bother me one bit that I was paying $30 for a burger and $15 for a beer. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and, and then after that, you go to the other parks. It's just, it makes uh, the most sense. And I think that what that alone is what people need to factor in. And then, of course, you put the network as part of Disney Plus and yeah. it becomes a whole uh, synergistic corporate nightmare. But everybody's happy because they get what they want, you know. And that's where I'd see it going in reality if someone can actually piece that together. But then again, there is also the other players where NBC could get it because, again, that kind of makes sense. And then other outside parties like um, said the Saudi Arabian government or something like that. What well, happens? I I mark my words. I don't think AEW will buy it. I don't think that makes any no. sense. No. I think there that's a safe bet that will not happen. But any of those three that we've just talked about, there's probably a good bet on one of those. But, oh yeah. You know we talk like uh, we had to talk about it. It's like the biggest story that's going on. It's like this weird story that's like. <laughs> if I, the, I, heard, <laughs> I heard one of the things I heard that. Uh, Tony, one of the reasons the cans put in a bid, or not even put in a bid, but expressed official interest in it, was that they knew that that would make that'd make the news cycle for that week. Oh, but, oh sure, my yeah. God, AEW is going to buy it! Like, never had any intention of buying it, but like all of a sudden, everybody's hey, talk, look, like it, talking about <laughs> AEW. I mean, that's a smart business plan. Yeah, you know, it, it, it didn't cost them a penny, you know, so. I mean, it probably cost them a little bit to file ex- interest in it. You probably have to pay a lawyer, but you know they have those on retainer. <laughs> I'd say they have plenty. Of- but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. It's one of those stories that um is sitting in the background. It's like this like little lad in the corner who's like, hey, you know, every time something's going on in WDB, you're like, you guys are getting ready to buy the sell, and now you've admitted it that by summer it's going to be sold. So we'll keep an eye on it, but. We're going to jump back to when Vince just ran WDB and ECW. Um, <laughs> I can't believe people didn't realize that ECW was owned by WWE. That's, when, you, when you look back at, at particularly this episode of Raw as well, where it's full of ECW guys, you're like, how did you not know that? But we're going to jump back to February two to, uh, 20. I don't know why you want to say to 20, 2022. <laughs> February 22nd. 1999 um we're, we're now like properly wrapping up to wrestlemania 1999 so i think it's in yes. the next couple of weeks 
And they're really setting the table here. Uh, Undertaker and Kane are, are you know, front and center here. This is building up the, the higher power storyline return of uh, Paul Bearer. And Mankind, uh, Paul White and The Rock are also one of the big... Um, yeah, one of, the, one of the big elements. Yeah, Austin's, of show. Austin's knocking about still that yeah, that that, that uh, WrestleMania match with The Rock has been more or less set. So yeah, yeah. So a, a lot a lot of uh, stuff going into this again is all for WrestleMania. They're on the they're on the road to WrestleMania more like more aggressively than they've been on any there, of the show so far. Is there another? So um, St. Valentine's Day Massacre was obviously. Valentine's Day, so it was February. Is there another pay per view between nope. now and Mania, or is Mania the next nope. one? Mania is the next one. There's just uh, there will be a heat before it, so we'll watch heat uh, before WrestleMania, um, just to kind of because there are some stuff that will be added um, on heat as there uh, as there normally is. But no, it's it's just raw up until WrestleMania. Oh yeah, so I kind of see that because I was wondering uh, if there was another pay per view or not because. I know where you said you were saying you really enjoyed this one. This was, I think, of of all the raws we from nineteen ninety nine that we've done. This is the first one I was a wee bit disappointed by because um, up until now, because we came in just after the Royal Rumble, just before Valentine's Day Massacre, into Valentine's Day Massacre, and out the far side of it, and this was the first one where it kind of felt like they're they're spinning their wheels a bit. Everton's almost set up for WrestleMania, but there's, let me see, when is Mania? Uh, March 28th. So there's still five weeks to go. Mm. So I just slightly got the impression, not, not a bad show by any stretch, but it, this one didn't have the sort of constant momentum that the other ones have had. I felt there was a wee bit of wheel spinning here because well, they, they almost have everything in place. Yeah, it's because they're building up another storyline. They're building up the higher power storyline and they're yeah. like trying to give the Undertaker yeah. something to do, which we'll see how that plays out. But at WrestleMania <laughs> as well, um, we'll see how that plays out and it's not good. But um, no, I agree. I Also, I, it's funny that you mentioned it. This is the, the only, well, the first Raw that we've had that has a lot of matches. Because, yeah, you know, I was surprised, yeah. And they're not like... They're actually long by comparison. <laughs> like, there's an eight-minute match here for some reason, which is like, whoa, that's that's a new one. Um, and that was, you know, randomly in the middle of the show, and it wasn't really that good. But um, and that's why the matches are three minutes long. But no, I agree. I I mean, I I enjoyed I enjoyed the fact that I'm like, okay, it, okay. Let me put it this way, because I know where it's going. And I know yeah. what they're setting up. I'm I I'm enjoying it because I'm like, okay, there's some really cool aspects here, and this is like the roots of it, and it ends quite well. But no, I mean, yeah. if I was watching this cold at the time, I probably would agree. I also I also enjoyed the fact that we got to see Bark on after we yeah. just watched Raw. For all. <laughs> oh, I actually have yeah a couple of notes on on that. And, um, and, I, and I marked for... a little and I marked a little bit when I saw Bark on. Um, so. For yeah. uh yeah, he's he's back to just bark gun, he's not bark the anvil. <laughs> <laughs> well no, he was yeah, what what was he he was the anvil he was in Brawl for All, wasn't he? Yeah, he was he, yeah, in yeah, Brawl yeah. for All he went from bodacious Bart the bark to, bark, gun. to Bart Gun once they realized he could fight yeah. to bark the anvil by the time he came to to the the match at WrestleMania. See um, here's, no no hold on. Thing. He's not the anvil yet, he'll be the anvil in a month. Oh yeah, because yeah. the thing at WrestleMania, yeah, it happened months after the brawl. Yeah, brawl. yeah, brawl oh, for all was right. nineteen ninety eight, and then WrestleMania happened like a, a month so after this. So I think that's why he's back because they're like trying to build him up now as a legit but, tough yeah. guy. So uh, just for a wee bit of context, uh, it's been four months since the last time Nitro won. Uh, the ratings war at this stage. I think way back in October was the last yeah. time that they beat out Raw. But they're still up there. They're still neck and neck. So this is a loaded show. This had the first ever Inferno match. This no, had it did, no well, I had the first ever Inferno match on, on TV. On TV, okay. So first ever Inferno match on TV, even though it didn't go that way, they, it had you know, technically was supposed to have 
a world title match between The Rock and, and The Big Show. On the other channel, uh, you had a load of nothing matches and then the main event was a non-title match between Goldberg and Steiner. So absolutely nothing going on on Nitro, but still uh, almost neck and neck. It was WWE got 5.5 for this week and Nitro came in at 4.8 and like what... What wrestling company today wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't kill for a four point eight? I don't even think you know. I think combined, <laughs> no, no, no. Even, <laughs> all be. the wrestling shows together, for the <laughs> you wouldn't even get that four point eight. Like all of them. Um, yeah, oh yeah, like like know. and and count everybody who was at the CZW show at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> count everybody in in the Olympia who's there for OTT. <laughs> Everybody, like all the wrestling shows, no, you wouldn't even get it, you know. So yeah, it 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 is it is wild to think, and I mean, even look at the crowds, like the it's just jammers, like absolutely just packed, packed to the rafters, and I mean, it, it, okay, so the show opens up. Um, hold on, where's the show coming from? Um, Tennessee, so Shannonuga, Tennessee. Um, the next episode is March 1st, so we are like again running toward WrestleMania very, very quickly. And, um, yeah, so the show opens up with a v- rather strange promo, but one strange for the time, but would actually end up becoming the hallmark of Raw, a Vince McMahon promo. Um, and he comes out with, uh, you know, rolls up the crowd, the crowd's all angry, calls out the big show, big show walks out, rock, then the rock is uh challenged to such. Mankind comes out, uh, introduces referee Socko, which is fun, <laughs> and that sets up what would happen later on in the night, and obviously then what would happen um, in Teresa Mania property. So we're not going to talk about that just yet. But the real talking point, as you said, is the actual main event of the night, which is the Inferno match, and you have the worst graphic ever seen <laughs> for anything ever, um, which is like something that was done on MS MS Paint. Um, you know the actual it, like. Yeah. It is mad when you when you think back, like so when you think back to these shows, you kind of remember the vibe more than specifics. Like you remember how how hot it was and how fast the shows were and how fresh Everton was. It's only when you really watch it, particularly when you're used to the very slick, very polished production of nowadays, that you see just how just how janky some of it was back then. Yeah, I mean, like whenever you're using computer graphics period you're gonna have jank and like yeah and it's from 1999 like it's yeah you have to cut it a bit of slack but like it's just it's so terrible that you're like okay this is real bad you know but it's still like an interesting way to go i mean it's like when when i think back okay sorry hold on hold on oh sorry yeah go ahead sorry like an inferno match out of nowhere (laughs) like this wasn't set up last week folks this just happened now their context the first inferno match was the first time kane and the Undertaker were fighting it was the first time they were really gonna kind of settle things because they'd wrestled at wrestlemania and they're like no okay we're we're gonna fight here in an inferno match and they built up for for months and obviously kane doesn't like fire because he was burned and now we know it was emotional burning uh, <laughs> uh, stupid product. Um, but that's not what he says here. No, that's he not what he says very, here. No. Vince McMahon very clearly says here that the Undertaker murdered his parents in a <laughs> fire. That is uh, that tends to get dropped whenever Undertaker's a face. Yeah, so it was all emotional murdering rather than actual <laughs> murdering. So that's where we're going. Emotionally set his man down <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah, emotionally. That so that's that's where we are now. Like you know, um, yeah. And like in, in the in the first segment, they book they basically book this inferno match out of nowhere, right? So it's it's not really set, and again, Taker wasn't really antagonistic as such in the last episode. What he was, but he wasn't. He just wasn't really playing ball with Vince. So he's like trying to punish Undertaker for no real reason, and seems like he's just making it worse. Because remember, Undertaker's doing this whole satanic. Uh, ministry gimmick here it's like yeah okay i'll a tell bit you of... what undertaker was really lucky like like you said there was no bill this wasn't set up and all undertaker was really lucky that they just happened to have all the gear for an inferno match with them that's in a good point Chattanooga. 
<laughs> yeah, they're just like, hey, just what, what do we do with this? I'll just bring it with us just in case, like, you know. Did you, did you bring the Inferno gear this way? Oh, we never use it. Do we need to bring it? Oh, you, you better throw it in the truck just in case. <laughs> The hell in the cell. Oh no, we won't be using that though. The fire though. We need that. Don't forget <laughs> yeah, that. All, always keep it in the back pocket. <laughs> always keep it in the back pocket. And it's funny because like on pay-per-view, I think the Inferno match was only done about five times, maybe. Five or six. I I don't think it's any more than that. But on Raw, it was done surprisingly a lot. It's like the Hell in the Cell. Everyone forgets the Hell in the Cell was done on Raw a fair bit as well. And it was just like you probably shouldn't. Like you it's, probably it's shouldn't do that on like free tv you know it's mad when you when you think of the hell in a cell you really only ever think of four or five matches yeah you know you don't you don't you don't had like i think they've had like 40 of them have they yeah but you know one includes match in a cage um no no i mean literal just hell in a cell matches yeah but what i'm saying is you know the modern when it became a pay-per-view and oh yes match in a match in a cage no, I know. Like no one ever says, "Oh, I really like that Seamus Randy Orton Hell in a Cell from 2008." It's like, no, you didn't. No one liked that one, you know. Or from 2010. Sorry. Um, you always think about the wars that were on pay per view, you know. And I think it's the same with the hell, with the Inferno match. I think everybody just thinks about 1998 Undertaker versus Kane. Nobody's gonna say, "Man, that that Inferno match in Shannonuga." On Raw, everyone loved it. <laughs> oh, my, here. I, I, ju- I just looked it up. There have been more than 50 Hell in a Cell matches. Oh. Yeah, no. More than 50. Because uh, I don't know what, what year this is uh, from, but it's obviously it's on Wikipedia, so it's not updated. Right. Recently. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's upsetting and disappointing in equal <laughs> measure. Um. Okay, so obviously Vince set this up. There was a bit of a tussle backstage with the with the corporate with, with the corporation um, between basically between Big Show and The Rock. Seems like the Big Show wants his title shot against The Rock. The Rock's like no, um, and then it, from there it goes into our first match, which is a very interesting par- pairing. I must say, it's the public enemy, better you know from ECW. Speaking of ECW. Um, they were recently brought into the WWE from ECW and later killed, literally, um, <laughs> by yeah. the the acolytes, acolytes on an episode of Heat, which we may actually watch because it it's they they destroyed them, they destroyed them for no reason other than they're from ECW against the Brood, Edge and Gangrel, accompanied by Christian. So oh, look, man, that that entrance, well, will always be amazing. So their entrance is about a minute. And it's incredible. The match is over by DQ and lasts 1 minute 20, 23 seconds. So enjoy the entrance, folks, because it's the best <laughs> part of the match. Uh, and that goes for most Sorry. of the matches tonight, apart from, as you pointed out earlier, a bizarre hardcore match that for no reason goes on like eight and a half minutes. But don't forget, when we're talking about the Brood, they live a gothic lifestyle. They do. <laughs> that's up there with the box like structure for me uh, it's the, it's the r- most ridiculous Michael Cole call ever it's like a gothic lifestyle what is that call them vampires you moron <laughs> they're trying to be vampires they're not trying to be guts they're not hanging out in central bank like so yeah like like you say um, yeah this just kind of made no sense so they brought public enemy in ECW hardcore brawler guys they had them win on a technicality a dq yeah. and then they had uh, the brood beat the hell out of them afterwards and leave them in a you know the the bloodbath thing that the brood does so it just kind of there was no winners here no the brood lost the match the guys who are supposed to be the hardcore brawlers won on a technicality and then got beat up it was just <laughs> they won on a technicality. You know? The EC dub. EC dub. Like, yeah, nobody, <laughs> nobody brings in public enemy to see them win with like, you know, an expertly timed small package. Like, or or win on a DQ. Or a DQ, yeah. From not even from like a weapon shot, from like an interference with Christian. And yeah, then just... when the best part is when they tried to go for chairs to actually make it a hardcore thing, 
they get blood batted and it's like it's over. It's like oh ridiculous. Yeah, unfortunately DQ finishes are gonna be a bit of a a bit of a theme. But as you say, from this period of wrestling, it really wasn't about the matches. It was the well, here's here's what here's what was interesting, right? You took the words out of my mouth because the net the actual point of the whole little skirmish was what happened during the break. We didn't even see it. We saw it in a, in a replay. The court, the ministry attacks the brood. Now, remember, the brood were revealed to be part of the ministry two weeks ago, so they're being attacked for no reason. Well, from from what I could tell, it's it's the Undertaker punishing them for losing. Ah, that makes sense. That you know, makes like, sense. He says something about you need to be disciplined. But then again, so so who's won here? <laughs> so Public Enemies won on a technicality and then got beat up. And then the guys who beat them up got beat up. <laughs> That's a very good point. Okay, well, there we go, folks. We don't even know what really happened. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's very confusing. Out walks Val Venus with a shirt that I really want. Um, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> it says Venus Envy. It's it's hilarious. Uh, and WWE merch has never been this creative since. Uh, no, it has. I didn't even know there was a Val Venus shirt. Period. <laughs> that's, that's that's brilliant. Um, so he that, walks out to do that's, commentary. That's, that's a present for the uh, the psychiatrist in your life. Absolutely. Um, so he, he walks out uh, to do commentary. He's the IC champion, as we know. He uh, recently broke up with Ryan Shamrock for some reason. Um, and he's going to do commentary for Billy Gunn versus Ken Shamrock, which ends in a no contest after five minutes. So when there still Billy is, Gunn, still when, isn't a, it, 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 there still isn't a number one contender out there. Sorry, go on. Uh, yes, yeah, so, the, so there's no number one contender, like you say. And this ends... From what I could see, Ken Shamrock, uh, I, I don't know how, but apparently he's wrestling in the ring, but he can hear Val <laughs> Venus and Jerry Lawler talking about like how the uh, Val Venus loved using uh, his sister. Yeah. So like I don't know how he heard that, but the literally that is the language they're using. Like he has he Jer- has those 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 um, ear muscles very well developed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. supernatural lifting, hearing, lifting dumbbells with his lungs. <laughs> um, but God, yeah, the language is like Jerry Lawler's. Like, hey, how, how'd you get on with Ryan Shamrock? Oh, God, I bet you she has a tight little body on her. And Val <laughs> is going, oh, she did when I met her. But she didn't when I was finished using her. <laughs> oh, my. oh my god, horrendous! Like it's 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 still on. Actually, okay, we're bringing in a new scale, folks, and we're 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 like close to, <laughs> to where we have to be careful here. We're going to call it the Mark Madden scale. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so one is like you know, slight. One is Six, one is know. something harmless that Mean Gene would say. Yeah, exactly. That's a good one. So one is like Mean Gene, right? Six to seven is like the most abhorrent Jerry Lawler. And then 10. <laughs> 10 is the, is the Mark Madden grunt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we're going. So on that scale, this was about, yeah. this was about a five. <laughs> it's the Mark Madden growler scale. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, terrible, 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 terrible stuff. Um, yeah. the, the only thing that annoyed me about this was uh, WWE has a pretty good mid card, like a technically oh, yeah. good yeah. mid card this time. And I would love to see Billy Gunn and Ken Shamrock and Val Venus actually get some time to actually wrestle. I think they could work a really good match. Well, you might. That's all I'll say. You might. That's all I'll say. So I'll move on from this. Um, yeah, I mean, Val Venus is, is, is actually really funny on commentary, uh, yeah. despite Jerry Lawler being Jerry Lawler. Um, Michael Cole just... I miss this Michael Oh, he, Cole. Does, he doesn't know what to say. He's <laughs> just sitting there so confused. He's like, what's going on? But he, he does the best he can with what he's given. Um, but yeah, this match quickly devolves down into just uh, a, a slugfest. And they are obviously building towards that kind of payoff between these three. 
which yeah. we'll we'll get into in a couple of weeks. Then from there, um, it, again, like I have to say, despite the little skirmish that goes on, fair play to Val Venus for able to keep that belt on the entire time and the tell. Um, and and the tell and the tell it, it doesn't move at any point in time. Uh, it, it sets up the next backstage segment with the Rock and Vince. Um, but the real kind of main segment here is with Kevin Kelly, um, and Sable. Sable again is doing her heel shtick where she's you know she's obviously doing Playboy and she's doing those kind of things. She's putting herself over. This is like the third, or, third, second or third segment like this where we've seen it where someone comes out from the crowd. To like challenger, and it's uh, I think it's Ivory, isn't it? It is Ivory. Uh, it's Tory. Tory, that's it. Sorry. So no, this is the, this is so this is the debut of of Tory. So we saw the debut. Of, yeah. So we saw the debut of Ivory three weeks ago. Yeah. And this is the debut of Tory. Now it's quite interesting actually as well because I mean Ivory and Tory look exactly the same. It's very weird. Uh, it took me a wee while to, whenever they brought her out of the crowd, cause, so she's introduced as like a stalker fan type thing. Yes. Yeah, it took, it took me a minute to clock who she was. Now it's funny because in less than a year she'd be called she'd be called a dirty Je- Jezebel um, by Jr. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna be watching this woman with with great interest because I'm like, I want to see this arc where she's just a stalker fan to be called the Jezebel by Jr. every week. Um, you know where she cheats on. On Kane with Xbox. Well, speaking of Jezebels, yes, we have this whole section, and this is oh Luna comes out then. This is far from the first time WWE have done this, particularly around Sable. Uh, Sable's in Playboy. Sable's on the cover of Playboy. Everybody go and buy Playboy and see Sable. She's nude in it. It's great. Go and see her. And. Uh, we never got talking about it uh, just because it happened, you know, around Christmas and the different things you're doing. But WWE fired Mandy Rose yeah. just over a month ago because yeah. she had her own OnlyFans account. So we're going to stop that there, Martin, and we're going to pick it up after this break because, well, it's time, but also because, you know, watershed. So, oh, is, is you, want to, you, you want to get over the water said, I want to get over the water. <laughs> yes, I want to get Sable over the water. And Mandy Rose. Yeah, yeah. So, folks, if you want to hear that discussion, that's the exact discussion we're going to have on the podcast. Um, so, Martin, is there anything you want to plug before we, we go into overtime? No, no, I just say make sure you hop straight on to the podcast because we're going to be using our late night voices. <laughs> <laughs> just going to talk to that the entire time. That's all it's going to be. <laughs> But yeah, okay, we're gonna finish. Um, we're gonna finish raw, and of course, uh, kind of, we 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 can use the words that we can't use here, and we can obviously talk in more detail about these adult topics, which uh, will will not, you know, we got to be careful with the watershed and such. So Don't scandalize the people of Phoenix FM. We will not scandalize anybody, obviously. But uh, if you guys want to help us out, you totally can. Spread the word of the podcast. Spread the word of the show. Let us know if there's something you want us to cover. We're obviously going to be sitting here. Looking at news that breaks with WDB and AEW, but still in our time machine, hurling towards WrestleMania in 1999. But again, guys, go over to Nerdtown Media, the wrestling or of course, the True Penny channel, where you can find the rest of the show. We'll see you after this break. And if you're listening to us on Phoenix 92.5 FM, we'll see you next week. If you have nothing else to do on a Saturday, if you like nerd things, now check out Nerd to Know Basis here on Phoenix 92.5 FM, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then head over to nerdtoknowmedia.com for all of our shows as part of the Nerd to Know Media Radio Network. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production. And we're back, Martin. Now we can 
cross over into talking about these adult topics such as OnlyFans, <laughs> etc. Well, well, speaking of OnlyFans, I think I have. So we've been talking about setting up our own OnlyFans if people don't sign up to Patreon. And I think I have the perfect name for it. What is it? Only Marks. I think that I think that will I think that'll get across what we're about. <laughs> I think only hands is pretty good where it's just only... people eating people just eating crisps like. <laughs> <laughs> just hands going into the crisp packets and just that's what it is. Oh like almost like a like an ASMR thing. Yeah. But yeah. with crisps exclusively. Any particular flavor or does the no i mean you, you don't want to you know box yourself in no yeah no. you want to be as as creatively free as this <laughs> exactly exactly you know walker's uh, one reek tato you know king and then you could even like you know open it up for like the japanese flavors where they you know oh, i thought i thought I, th- I thought you were going to do something truly scandalous like get a bowl and mix tato and king's Oh God, no! That would that would. You know, <laughs> you have the to, church on you. You would <laughs> the town elders. Um, okay, but, but all right. So, so so Mandy Rose now yeah. fired for her OnlyFans, and yes. not a thing. Like her OnlyFans is by all accounts very tame. Like there's nothing. Really? On it. Yeah, there's nothing on. See, it. I I thought she was like you know getting railed no. by six lads and stuff the way they were talking no, about no, it. No, no, she's not like. Uh, Shoving the intercontinental title <laughs> up or anything like that. Because <laughs> you know? the way they were going on about it, it was just like, no, it's Geez, really, what is she doing? It's really Sorry, tame. not that it's we're shaming very... anybody for that, obviously, but I mean. Oh, no, bad throw know, like, Yeah, so... go for it, like, absolutely. But I mean, it's just like, yeah, I mean, that's not too bad. Like, you know, it's it's grand. Like, well, by all intents and purposes, what, what but, Sable yeah, was doing. I just thought it was, was yeah, it was a strange juxtaposition from 1999 where they're all go out and get sables playboy to hold what mandy rose flashed a nip on a on a private <laughs> website like you're out of here let's see i think that's the difference wwe got a massive cut out of the playboy ah and also they can they can sell it in their own way like you can't you know they can't be like oh give us give us like 20 percent of of your your nip money there you know it's like i don't <laughs> think <laughs> it'll be an added uh, it'll be like a premium level on the network <laughs> I mean they could like <laughs> if they wanted to but I don't know I think what again what people do in their private time is is you know the only thing and it's kind of like the whole Twitch thing as well it's like how much money do you need WWE you don't need to be doing that and like the fact that they like with the t- it's, it's interesting because they did it with the Twitch thing as well yeah. where they have their own Twitch shows but then the minute WDB go, uh, WB stars go off and do their own Twitch, they're like, oh, no, I can't do that. You know, but it's like, but hold on a second. I know they're kind of doing it with, you know, their own, with their own pornography where it's like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we, once we produce it, it's fun, but don't you do it yourself? And you're like, wait, hold on. What? <laughs> but again, yeah, you've heard, you've heard this from, and I'm going to, you know, mention them. Sorry for interrupting you, man, but you, no, you no, heard no, this with Punk where he would yeah. go off and do his own movie deal. Oh, yeah. And, the, the, and they would block so- it. Yeah, and that's apparently like so. It's not just now that you think about it. It's not just a because it's oh it's pornography. It's because it was their own thing, you know. Yeah. It was their own thing. So it could be anything. Like I mean, even even to Jericho, right? When Jericho had Fuzzy, right? Fuzzy were born on Raw. Yeah, I'm I'm actually surprised that. Uh, well, actually, for all we know, maybe WWE did get a cut of. Whatever, probably, probably or whatever they did, probably. But um, Cause, but I mean, if you think about it, like anything that WWE runs, they've created. Anything they don't create, they they kill. Now it's not to the, post, the same point where they fire you. Like they didn't fire the lads and girls who were doing Twitch. Just you know, it seems only fans. They're kind of like, because it is what it is. It's a lot easier to be like, oh, yeah, don't pretend be doing that you're now. pretending yeah, you're outraged, morally don't. outraged when really they're like, you know. Jerry Lawler yeah. probably losing his mind backstage. You know? Don't you be doing OnlyFans. We need those millions for <laughs> rape allegations. <laughs> we need those, those money to pay interns, allegedly. That's the um, silence fund. <laughs> <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're eating into Vince's hush money now. Look, have you no morals? <laughs> um, we couldn't afford WCW, but we can afford to pay, <laughs> to pay Vince's fund money. 
if, yeah. you, if, if you don't give us a cut of your twitch, Vince might have to go to trial. Now, come on. <laughs> um, so he might have to be held accountable for what he does. How dare you? What, what, um, what really bugs me about this is, do you know what? If you're going to exert that level of ownership over your staff, that's fine. At least make them staff. They're, yeah. they're exerting this level of control and ownership over people and still calling them independent contractors. See, that's what's wild. It's like, you know, yeah, I mean, if you're going to do that, like, but then again, they've done this for so long that it's 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 just kind of par for the course, like, you know, independent contractors, fair enough, but they, like, okay, here's the question, because I haven't looked into it, right? Is she using the name Mandy Rose? I don't know. That's a good question. Wait, because, it, is because, that her name, though? I don't, I don't know. But even if it was, if she's, if she's like, okay, where, where are you to imagine this would fall down? And I'm not like a legal expert on this specific thing. Um, but I would say no, that's, it, that's her name. Her name's Amanda Rose. Okay. Well, if it's Amanda Rose, that's probably fine. But if it's Mandy Rose and she's coming out as a WWE star and probably doing stuff with, you know, the wrestling thing, I can see a case where they're like, ah, here. We own that. But if it's just yeah. her, just, you know. No, so her full, na- her full name is Amanda Rose Sacamano, and her, like, online name uh, is Mandy Sachs. So Mandy, and then short for Sacamano. So, yeah, there's there's no reason for them to to claim ownership of, of uh, whatever website she runs. Yeah, I just think they're, um, you know, they need to. And that, here's the thing: going back to our earlier discussion, if Disney did buy WWE, they probably would be known as employees. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I suppose yeah. If they're going to be, like you said, depending on what way they operated, if they're going to be running shows out of, you know, a Disney owned, uh, a Disney owned studio every week. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the, the their employment contracts might change. Yep. Yep. So I mean there's a massive upside here. So but moving on, we have uh Own Heart and Double J Jeff Jarrett with Deborah with the best yep. shirt ever. Um defeating D Brown in a two on one handicap match in about four minutes. Yep. Um D Lo another... you know, poor D Lo, he puts on a great performance. He 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 um doesn't come out wearing the the cool chest piece, which I don't know how he was out wrestling that because it's a foreign object, but still, <laughs> it, it looks awesome. And he has like, you know, the head waggle and all the head waggle. And I, his frog splash was always it's is my favorite frog splash except for um. But so Roman Roman Reigns was allowed to wrestle in a <laughs> swat that's true. Vest for that's true for years. For years. But I mean, Dilo's moveset is like one of the coolest movesets at this time. Like everything he does is so like. Yeah, flashy but impactful. That it's kind of cool. Like even though this match was so short, the way he works with own heart is actually really good. Like yeah, Double J is Double J, and uh, I think he's probably the one putting the match together. But him and Own, that's where this match actually shines. And yeah, it's not long, but Own's obviously he's a heart, right? He, brilliant. But it just works super well with Dilo when they're when they're yeah. having these little. Exchanges it's, in the ring, it's actually it's, really nice and fluid. It's almost frustrating again. It's like the Shamrock Billy Gun Venus thing. I'd love to see D Lo and Owen Hart go fifteen minutes and really let the let the brakes off. Yeah, and I mean like a lot of this is obviously, you know, Mark Henry's not here. Uh D Lo, like these four men would have matches for the tag belts. And it's kind of wasted because I'm like, oh, each of these four guys could have a feud with each other. For a single belt, which would be fantastic. Um, and for circumstances, which are obviously, you know, the, we all know what they are. D'Lo and Jeff Jarrett end up having a bunch of feuds later on in the year, which is really cool. But I'm like, oh, should have been on heart, you know, who had these feuds. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, for, it, for, it, for such a great wrestler, like if, if you had one phrase, that could typify his whole career. It's, it's, it should have been Owen Hart. There's, there's, there's ten times during his career, WWE had him where he should have been, you know, really pushed. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, when you see him, how good he was, it's, it really is a shame. But this match um, is another screw D'Lo Brown moment by uh, PMS. <laughs> oh, Russo. Tell you what, so... So, uh... Jack, so, sorry, just one second. Jacqueline jumps off the top rope, kicks him in the head. A Perry hell Reynolds of a drop it. kick. Oh, man. She buries him. And then it obviously sets up the win where uh, Double J and uh, it's O'Mahony. it's mad because uh, five yep. minutes be- five minutes before this we had the Sable thing and it ends with a uh, Sable splitting Tory with the women's belt mm. and I mean she barely taps her with it it's the weakest looking thing yeah and then Jacqueline comes out and <laughs> nearly kicks Dilo Brown's head off you in can... the back of the head in the back yeah, of the head yeah. as well very That's dangerous. How... That's how, uh, that's how Paige was injured, isn't it? I think so. Um, but you can tell the, the women who are there because they're great workers and the women who are there because they're in Playboy. Yeah. Um, so uh, Mick Foley makes his uh, WWE uh, guest referee match. Uh, sorry, um, not match. Guest referee shirt. Debut. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, it, <laughs> uh, and it, yeah, he he's a he's a guest referee in this uh, Rock Paul White match, and it's supposed to be for the title, but it's not really because it's no contest. And the minute the match starts, they turn on Mick and beat the hell out of him. So it was all a big work. Where it Vince... wasn't as it wasn't as bad as say the finger poker doom. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't that bad. It's not like they spent weeks building up a huge Rock versus Paul White championship match, you know. Yeah. Um, but it still did feel kind of screwy. Yeah, it was just, it was just, you know, it was cheap for the sake of cheap, you know. And uh, the thing about it was, it was to get over, well, to stop the crowd cheering for Paul White, which is what they were doing, and to get people so annoyed with the Rock that. You know, you can have a sympathetic reason for Mick Foley to become the eventually the guest referee. So that's what they were trying to do. Um, it was just, it should have been more, it should have been better, but it was what it was, you know. Oh, the, the other thing I wanted to say was, though, about the Jacqueline match, about the, the D'Lo Brown match, whenever Jacqueline comes in and does the drop kick, um, and then... Uh, Owen Hart goes to the pin you can hear Michael Cole go oh my god the referee never saw it the referee missed it and I'm sitting there going Michael it's, it's a handicap match there's no there's no DQ she could have done it right in front of the referee wouldn't, and it would have been fine wouldn't have made a button of difference next match draws versus Steve Blackman two men who were in the brawl for all um, two legit tough guys this match was about three minutes. Not the best match in the world, unfortunately. Steve Blackman would get the win. Um, it's unfortunate with, with draws because he seems to be the most um, lost here that I've seen him um, in you know, this run that we've seen where he's usually actually quite good. Yeah, I don't think draws and Blackman had a good chemistry. Um, but this again, this was just a, a nothing match to set up. Um, but it's just to fill time. The real story yes. was backstage with Vince and Kane, uh, where Vince is like, "Hey, you better win this match tonight," and that's yeah. what they were setting up. Uh, it's it's a nothing match. Um, it's your bang average three minute three minute raw match, just yeah, just to have a match. Yeah, good promo by the Undertaker backstage though, with his little blue light and he's wearing his little cape, so he, he's having a good time. <laughs> he's enjoying himself. Happy yeah. out. Yeah, he's like, you know, has his little cape on and he's like, yeah, I'm just talking. I don't know who I'm talking to, but definitely to someone. And uh, Were you looking at, at his, so we, he gives this promo not facing the camera. He's facing yeah. away. He's looking and at I, someone. Yeah, he, I was Could looking Paul at thing, and his eyes were moving weird. And I was like, is he trying to do his, his pupils thing? Or could've been, could've been is reading. he just. Is he just reading that promo off? I, I think he was. I mean, I, I think he was. I think because I mean, he never does that. He usually looks at the camera, and yeah. I think he was just hand something like five. I think a lot of the show was booked, um, kind of on the fly. That's why it's a bit disjointed. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think he was just hand something the last minute. Go here, read this garbage. You know. I, I think so because it was pretty lengthy. It was. <laughs> load of bloody nonsense it was um, it was the most nonsense thing i've ever heard taker say and that's was, saying something it was bray wyatt levels of bullshit it was just <laughs> random nonsense and i'm like okay this doesn't tie into anything you've said <laughs> everyone knows this is a random match that was made yesterday probably um yeah it was funny so that's what you know but he looked like he had a good time saying it so i mean that's it you know yeah i mean you buy that robe you want to wear it as much as possible. Absolutely. And it's probably, you're probably cold, you know, so. Well, especially like where he was, uh, you know, it looked like it was out back or, yeah, you know. Yeah. But he wants to get back to catering, you know, so. He's probably looking forward to the Inferno match, get a bit of heat. <laughs> so, you know. Um, and then we have uh, the next, so Goldust comes out and Goldust is very weird at this time still. Like, it's not the weirdest he's ever been, but he's still quite weird, but like has a, a super over. He's gone against Val Venus, so there's two very sexually charged characters gone against each other here for some reason. I don't think it's for the IC belt, because they don't say it's for the it's IC a, belt. It's a non-title match. Okay. Weirdly, like, sense. why? What's the point? Yeah, so Val comes out and is again a super over, but the crowd don't really... He's over, but the crowd don't seem interested, except for your one who has the old school camera, you know, the old clicky camera, and she's like losing her mind for him. So, I mean, you know, it's like they're very sure to go for the, all the women on this. And I would have loved them to, like, do that for, for Goldust. <laughs> Just to look at disgust. <laughs> Goldust comes out. Um, but, yeah, Val cut the promo and it's his, you know, hello, ladies promo. This match um, was not super long either. It was, like, three minutes. This is kind of where the show dips to, like, a dud for me. And I love Steve Blackman, don't get me wrong, but. From his match and in this match, it, it does kind of die a death. Goldust actually gets the win. And how he gets, excuse me, how he gets the win is by the Blue Meanie. So this is the return of the Blue Meanie. Or actually the debut of uh, the Blue Meanie outside of his Blue Dust gimmick. He's just the Blue Meanie now. So, yeah. you know, because he, he was obviously doing the, the Blue Dust thing into St. Valentine's Day Massacre and he got battered for it. So now he's back as just the Blue Meanie. And this is what he'd be until he leaves uh, or gets fired. And, uh, and he's uh, he's helping Goldust here, despite the fact that they've just had a feud. So there's obviously and and after Goldust wins, um, so the Blue Mini comes down, hits uh, Val Venus with a DDT outside the ring. Actually, mm. a really good looking DDT. Yeah. Um, Goldust does the pin, but then he's like completely baffled. He's like, why? I just battered the life out of you while you had... So there's obviously some sort of... Yeah, so story I, I, I know what happens here, and it gets really weird, so I'm not going to ruin it for everybody. Yeah, the Blue gets... Meanie Goldust storyline <laughs> gets really weird? Yeah, it gets really weird. I, I I remember seeing it as a child, and probably shouldn't have. Um. So yeah, we're, we're going to obviously keep an eye on that. This kind of... This builds into something. Um. It's not good, though, but definitely something. Um. And it would be the... Nearly the end of Gold, well, definitely the end of Goldust and WWE for a while because he'd end up going to WCW and doing his whole seven gimmick. But that's a couple of months away, so uh, yeah, hold this space, I suppose. Um, the next match is uh, well, it, it's Your a boy. joy, it's Your a boogily. joy, oh, it's a joy for us. The return of the Bookley, uh, well, we haven't had a Bookley in a while on this show, but it is, of course, Bart Gunn. Bart Gunn challenging for the WWE hardcore title. Man, where he should be all along, should be in the hardcore title. But before that happens, there's a backstage segment with uh, Shane with the, with the European belt with China. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not the best Shane has looked. And I don't mean that physically, I just mean it, it does, that segment did nothing for him. No, quick, even, <laughs> like even, nothing where for was, him. even where it was filmed. Yeah, like, it looked like it was being filmed in like a community hall. I was I was looking at that going, Jesus, I think I did Irish dancing lessons there. As a child. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's, <laughs> he's shooting an episode of Dance Moms, like yeah, you know. And you're like, what are you doing? You couldn't go to like an actual gym and do this there, but or, or just even somewhere at the back with the 
like the WWF logo, like a flag or a raw background or something. This just no down to the local YMCA, and that's it. We're just gonna you know pose in the mirror. It, it's it was a weird segment. D- down to the local GAA club and <laughs> do it in there. So Bart Gunn comes back and he's sporting a haircut, and also the British Bulldog look when the British Bulldog came back. The the blue jeans. Um, so Bart Gunn is the proto British Bulldog circa 1999. So, uh, and by the end of the year, you'll know what I mean because this is exactly how the British Bulldog dressed when he came back. It wasn't good, uh, and this either, neither was this. Uh, well, so fair, here, you know. here's what baffles me with this. Right, so, so they have their eight minute hardcore match, and it ends with some masked guy comes out and throws Bart Gunn off the stage. It's never explained. I mean, I assume it will be in future episodes, but that's how this uh, match ends. Mm. But Bart Gunn's fresh, or not fresh, a couple of months ago, but he's just after winning the Brawl for All, right? He's just back after winning the Brawl for All. Yeah. For God's sake, give him the hardcore title, right? Uh, Well, here's the thing. Sorry. They do put him over as legitimately tough because it starts off with attempted murder. With smashing the candy glass off his face, like candy holder off his face, which yeah, I mean, he, that's a hospital. Some, that's a hospital strip some, right there. Like there were some really good spots in this, but what I was thinking is you could have made a, a thing out of the brawl for all and out of this. If you didn't want to push him as a, an upper level guy, you could have him go out and do these hardcore matches and batter people with all sorts of weapons, yeah. and then in the end, he finishes them with a punch because his right hook is more devastating than any chair shot or any oh, that's very good. steel can or any bin lid or anything. You know, you oh, could even have good. him there with a chair in his hand and decides to drop it and, and clock them with the, you know, like it just, uh, I don't know. I mean, me and good. you have had our, our little <laughs> breakdown over the brawl for all. And if you haven't listened to it, that was your Christmas present, folks. Um, <laughs> But man, yeah, that's actually a really that would have been great. So much better than what they did, which was nothing. Um <laughs> but like Bark on, you know it's weird because with this the repackaging, he looks more legit. He seems to be much more of a you know, a, an actual wrestler as such. I remember these guys were in a tag team, which was the the return of the Midnight Express, which was god awful. Um, so this is an attempt to re- rehabilitate, rehabilitate the two of them, and uh, Bob Holly is, I think he's going by hardcore now, um, and that took a long time for him to actually get it. So he's by WrestleMania, yeah. he's properly hardcore Holly. He co- and, he comes out as Bob Holly, but throughout the match, the commentators keep referring to him as hardcore Holly. So yeah, yeah I think this is them introducing it. Yeah, and he could have done the same thing with Barkley, and I think they were trying to, but by the time. WrestleMania comes along. Poor Bart, gone. He's 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 uh, you know, he's no longer Bart Gun. He's gone, gone. You know, uh, because <laughs> this is it. The, the, you know, enjoy these little moments on Raw because this is the only time we're going to see him anytime soon. And he's very good in these hardcore matches, you know. But yeah. I think why they didn't is because it's actually the same role the hardcore is playing. It, it, these guys are the same character. Yeah, and that's the problem. To be fair to Bart, um, and I, uh, it's a, it is a bit depressing watching him in this, but from what I've read, I think he went on to have a fairly or semi successful run in Japan. He did, yeah. Um, all Japan, I think it was, yeah, made made a big deal out of uh, out of him knocking out Doctor Death. And yeah, he got a, and, he got and a good have, push over there. You have a return match, yeah, and he, he I think he beats Doctor Death then eventually. Yeah, so that. You know, he, he, look, he did better than a lot of guys who got into wrestling. Yeah, that's true. But the the weird ending is, you know, some lad in the mask throws him through a table and that, that sets up the win. So hopefully we'll find out um, who that is next week because we got no answers this week. <laughs> but judging that it's uh, 1999 WWE, we probably are going to get no answers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so that was it. Uh, Hardcore Holly wins, uh, covered in flower. Not a good look. Sets up the next match uh, with Shane McMahon uh, coming out. Well, Shane McMahon comes out to the ring with China. X Pac comes out with Triple H. Gets a low blow. This that... match is o- this match is over in one minute. 
<laughs> that caught me off guard for a second because X Pac came out and there was a cheer from the crowd. And I was like, oh, X Pac got an X Pop. And then I saw, oh no, he's walked out with Triple H. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what people so, are cheering for. So, so this match is setting up uh, the return match of, because obviously, you know, Shane won in a tag match. So it's actually, you know, this is setting up a return match at WrestleMania with uh, Shane and an X Pac. So China's doing pretty much all the fighting for Shane, and Shane is obviously the the just a stereotypical chicken shit heel. You know that's why he's been. Um, and I mean, he's scared of X Pac, and he really shouldn't be. I mean, it's X Pac, you know. <laughs> um, but Triple H is also trying to get his his come up and like his re- revenge on China. Uh, and it's just it's just a, an absolute mess of a match. It's one of the worst matches I've ever seen on on Raw. Um, so what happens here is X Pac does have um, X Pac does eventually defeat China after Triple H delivered a pedigree. So X Pac doesn't really do anything other than pin. China doesn't do anything other than just run around and get pedigree through the the K through the through the ring uh, for the victory. And she doesn't move. She's and he killed. He, he buried he her. Hits her with that pedigree as well. Like he, yeah. he yeah, lays he, it in. He yeah, doesn't like re- release the arms or anything. He no, no. Properly drives it in. Yeah. So yeah, it, this is stuff that's setting up for WrestleMania, which we'll see, you know, when it comes to it. And then from there, um, you know, there's a promo. Vince comes out, sets up the whole contract thing. And next week, there there'll be more of this kind of, you know. Kane Undertaker needs to set fight for the job, blah 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 blah. But basically, we're setting up for the main event, which is the Inferno match: the Undertaker versus Kane. Um, and look, it's the an Inferno match is kind of hard to do. I think they're very yeah. boring. Um, like the spectacle of it is pretty pretty badass, but it's yeah, very, I mean, it's very the, boring. Yeah, it it's all spectacle. I mean, the thing with it is Inferno match. It can never really deliver on its promises. It promises to burn people. Yeah, like full like, full body burn. Like the only the only way you're ever gonna see that is like with that Randy Orton the fiend thing, and it oh, was yeah. dreadful. Like, oh, that it, was that was yeah. I forgot about that. You know, so like well, I mean, it, okay. Here's a question I have for you: Has it's supposed to be Kane's match? He's. N- I don't think he's ever won one. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, I, oh, he I did. Think... Sorry, he did. He did with MVP. He beat MVP. But uh... well, here here's the thing, right? You're in an inferno match, right? Yeah. So think of it in terms of practicality. Who's the guy who's going to take the the bump, so to speak? Who's the guy who's going to take the the fire? Is it the wrestler who's out there, like Stone Cold, and his? Yeah trunks and his boots or is it the guy who was covered head to toe wearing gloves and a mask you know? literally who that's are you going to set on fire literally and that's why i'm like you know gonna be that guy you know <laughs> <laughs> it just seems that like you know from from a kayfabe story standpoint you know after you lost one or two of them you're like you know what uh, you, you need to get a different match you know <laughs> I, I suck at this and it, it's, yeah, I think, you know, anytime Kane is in an Inferno match, he's losing. You know, I think in 1999, I think there's two or three and he loses all of them, you know? Yeah. Um, 98, he lost as well. Um, it's like a uh, Abyss. Yeah. Every time, every time Abyss pulled out a bag of thumbtacks, he's the one who went into them. Or Daphne that one time. That was actually a great match. Oh, they. Uh, <laughs> Daphne took the worst uh, thumb, thumb top, thumbtack spot i've ever seen so and that was yeah she was on abyss's side so i mean oh well, there you go yeah. there you go <laughs> um yeah man like this match it, it was look it would have been cool to see i'm not gonna lie i would have loved to see an inferno, an inferno match live with the undertaker and kane i oh. wouldn't have felt like i've been cheated but, yeah um, like look you know. every, every time they get body slammed right and the flames do a big whoosh and you know like like it, it is a it is a really cool spectacle but yeah. Now, whenever they come out, I was looking at the entrances, and then I looked at the clock, and I was like, "They're not even in the ring yet. There's only six minutes left in the in the show." Yeah. Um, but as the match went on, I was like, "Oh, I see why now." Because 
the actual Everton around an Inferno match is cool. The actual match, <laughs> it's boring as hell. But it's the set up Paul Bearer coming out to the ring and hand Vince McMahon, who's doing commentary, a, a present. And uh, what's in the present is a teddy bear. And it's Stephanie McMahon's teddy bear, which we would know, which we would know. Um, and this is obviously setting up an angle, which we're probably going to see in a week or two, which is the kidnapping of Stephanie McMahon. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. And the wedding of Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> the and black wedding. The black wedding, exactly. So, yeah, Kane does eventually get his leg set on fire, which seems to be the part that always gets set on fire. Um, that's it. It's over. <laughs> it's, I did, I, it's, yeah. I did like the was quite good imagery at the end with yes. The, so the Undertaker takes takes the teddy off Vince McMahon, and Vince is kind of on his knees crying, "Why, why?" And Taker puts the teddy in the fire, and there's a great shot where Vince is just on his knees looking up at Taker, and Taker's looking down at him, holding out the burning teddy in front of him. It's like, you know, if nothing else, if you've done all this for that shot. That's a pretty cool shot. Well, they did, because that's one of the most famous shots from this time period. Yeah, yeah. That it's... shot. That shot. It, it, it's, it's in everything. And in any Undertaker documentary, any Dark Side documentary, any, anything like that that covers Undertaker and Vince, that's it. And we're we're going to see that shot about 25 times before <laughs> the end of this year. <laughs> so, you know... That, that's what this was for that, This whole episode of Raw was for that one thing Yeah that was one of the other things That I I was saying This episode didn't really Grip me in the way the other ones have Up until now Because mm. the whole episode was built around Two matches Around the yeah. Inferno match and around the World Title match So you had a bunch of nothing matches Up till then And then the World Title match Was you know Finger poke of doom, light, and mm. then the inferno match, which great image at the end, great spectacle, but was a six minute punchy kicky kind of. Although what I will say is, uh, uh, in in a rare move, we had Kane come off the top to off the top of the turnbuckle to outside the ring. Yeah, this Very is the good. guy who takes a pedigree on his knees. So that yeah. was. Was but this was cool. this was Kane's best year. This was his, his peak year, nineteen ninety nine. So, what, what did he debut? Ninety eight. Ninety eight was it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, apart from his debut, but ninety seven, ninety seven in oh bad blood, yeah, bad blood. But I mean ninety eight was, you know, his his sophomore year, and ninety nine was when he started doing some really really cool stuff. Like his view at X Pac in two thousand as well is incredible. So we're gonna see the best of Kane. Coming up soon. Um, next week's Raw, I, th- I think I'm just having a look here. I think you're going to be a bit disappointed with it again because it seems to be very, very similar to this to this week's one. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it happens. It happens sometimes with AEW pay per views. They build and build Everton, and they get to a week or two out from the show. Everything is ready to go. Everton's in place, uh, and they just kind of have to spin the wheels, maybe for but. But the, week, but the week after seems pretty cool. And, uh, you know, from what I see here, it looks like we're going to get answers to uh, Blue Meanie and Gold Dust. Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> folks. Many a main event. <laughs> strap in for that because, you know, that's what we all, that's what we're all here for. We're all here for the Blue Meanie and Gold Dust view, ang- angles, storylines. But I want to thank you so much for joining us this week, folks. Um, we will be back, obviously, next week. Um, well, I'm in Rome next week. We'll do a show anyway. We'll be back next week. Um, I might have to do a from location. Uh, Ooh, our man on the ground. Our man on the ground. I don't know what I'm on the ground for, but, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do a, we'll recover next week's Raw, obviously. Um, again, if there's anything you want to for us to cover, please let us know. Um, you can get us on our social media. The best way to get in contact with us is our social media. So you can go over to uh, therestingrewind.com where all the links are. And we uh, will get on that as well. There's a bunch of shows that we did over Christmas, which are up on um, True Penny Channel. They'll be up on the Nerd to Know Media um, feed very, very soon. And Martin, is there any... Actually, Martin, before yes. I say there's anyone to plug, um, Broforce, it's fantastic. 
Did you play it? Yeah, it's like yeah, the yeah. Best crack. It's so fun. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, it's like a it's like a little side scroller, but you're like knockoff versions of like Rambo and uh the Terminator and Neo and Blade and it's just a wonderful game. It's super fun. So I, I'm going to actually push that this week because it, Martin is rarely wrong with his game his game um, re- um, recommendations. Like, they're always really good. Um, so, yeah, uh, pick that up. I got it for, like, two quid on uh, on Switch. Yeah, I, I definitely... Look, it's really fun. Um, I definitely wouldn't pay... The, I think the full price is, like... 13 quid or yeah don't quid don't, or don't do that don't do that but <laughs> yeah, if you that. see it on sale for less than a fiver it's definitely worth picking up it's very very good it's very very good so Marin, again have you, have you got any recommendations or anything you do want to plug before we get over here uh no recommendations but in terms of plugging something just to say um obviously we had the passing of jay briscoe this oh, week. Man. one of yeah, the true. famous briscoe bro- brothers one of them boys yeah. um uh I can't claim to have been like a huge long-term fan. Like I say, I didn't really have Ring of Honor uh, growing up. It's kind of hard to get when you're out in rural Ireland with dodgy internet and that. But um, a huge fan of the of the trilogy that they had with FTR. Just three of the best matches I've ever seen. And um, yeah, kind of kind of disgusted with the attitude of Warner. Uh, Warner Discovery that even in death they wouldn't let AW kind of do a do a tribute show for him. Um, but they are going to do a Ring of Honor tribute show and they're going to put that up on the Ring of Honor uh, network for free. I don't think you're going to have to sign up to see it or anything. So at least he'll get some sort of tribute. But um, yeah, but, uh, like I, I don't really like to speak about wrestlers in personal terms. I don't know them. I can only talk about them as wrestlers and a thoroughly impressive um, character. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's um, look, it, there there was a time covering wrestling where it was death after death after death after death. Luckily, mm. the past couple of years, that really hasn't been a thing. But so when something like this was happening, it's kind of a shock. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't like very knowledgeable of Jerry Briscoe. Like I mean, it was uh, when we did the the international desk. We had obviously. Uh, we had an independent wrestling segment where obviously, you know, he featured quite a lot, but um, still very young, you know, a very, very young wrestler, uh, young guy. 38, 38, 38 years you know, old, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a shame. It really is. It, it is. But at it's least, and well, not not at least, um, he died in a, it was a car crash. Yeah, it wasn't, which, yeah, it, it wasn't was, wrestling related. Yeah, it wasn't like, like you were saying that, you have your wrestlers from the eighties and it's just death after death of heart failure, overdose, heart failure, and it's all to do with pain and medication and stuff from wrestling. It looks like this is just a not just a car crash, but Yeah, you, but you know you, you know, know what I'm trying to say. I do know what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. It's it wasn't caused by wrestling. Yeah. Or yeah. or the or the, um, the you know, the the dark side of wrestling, it was caused by an accident, an unfortunate, horrible accident. So look, is you know, it is awful. Um, he leaves one hell of a career, one one hell of a legacy, but it's still sad, man. And anytime anyone passes, it's it's sad. Anytime someone wrestling passes, it's you know, it is always tinged with that. You know, is it wrestling related? And obviously, this wasn't. So, as you said, it you know, you're not making light of it, but I think everyone listening to this knows what you mean. It's uh. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's just if you can take anything away from it, at least it's not that he spent the last twenty years, you know, in agony doing tiny little autograph signings, you yeah. know, and addicted to pain medication, like we've seen with so many other wrestlers. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But again, that's it's still it's still a a, a terrible tragedy. And um. You know, just on a on a on a higher note, um, Wrestle Kingdom was on. Um, oh, haven't, haven't had a chance to see it. I will, so we'll probably talk about that um, as a as a bonus show, Martin. If you're oh my god, because uh, o- o- Omega Osprey already yeah. <laughs> one of the matches of the year. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to check it out. I haven't had a chance just yet, but it is on my list. I do want to talk about Wrestle Kingdom. And uh, yeah, guys, again, if there's anything you want us to plug 
or um, you want to come on the show as guests. We have a couple of guests coming up as well, Martin, um, to, to cover certain things on the show. Nice. So that's going to be fun. Uh, trying to get some interviews. And um, yeah, we're going to, you know, obviously 2023, try and uh, be a bit more consistent because usually with last year, touring got in the way and uh, I just wasn't able to. So again, thanks for everyone who's listened to the show. Martin, thank you for putting up with me. Oh, and, uh, like you know, I got to hang out with a rock star. <laughs> That's not that's not, that's not going <laughs> mad, um, you know. Uh, again, like folks, everyone who listens to the show, we really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week here on the True Pain Channel, Nerd to Know Media, the Resting com, and of course over in Phoenix. But this is you know the bonus show where we can swear and you know say stuff that won't get us kicked off the air. So that's why you listen, folks. We will see you next week here on the Resting Rewind. Bye, guys. Damn boys. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production. 